Let's talk about linear approximations. And so what that means is we're just going to be using a line, in this case this tangent line, to approximate the value of the function. So in other words, if we wanted to know maybe this height right here, but we couldn't find it for some reason with the function, we could use the tangent line and say, you know, this is approximately the, the height of the function. Obviously, they're off by some small amount. And what happens is the approximation gets better as we stay close to the point of tangency. So right here is the point of tangency. And you see that when we're close to the point of tangency, the, the, the height of the tangent line and the height of the function are very, very, very similar. So our approximation is going to be really good. As we move farther away from the point of tangency, you can see that the height of the tangent line and the height of the function differ by quite a bit. That's quite a big difference. So it's going to be a pretty bad approximation. So we want to stay close to the point of tangency uh, to make sure that our approximation is good. So if we're going to use this tangent line for an approximation, we should know its equation. And that just comes from the point-slope form of a line. So point-slope is y minus just a general y minus the y that we have, which is f of c, is equal to the slope of the line. Well, that's just the derivative, right? The derivative at c, right? The slope of that tangent line is f prime of c times by x minus c. So this comes right from the point-slope form of a line, which means we could solve for y and just find out that y is equal to f of c uh, plus the derivative f prime of c times by x minus c. So again, this is just the equation of a line derived from the point-slope form of a line. And this y now, y will give us the height of the tangent line. So the, any point on that tangent line we want to figure out, we, we, it, it would, we could easily figure it out. And that's, that, this is really all there is to linear approximation. Maybe this function is, is hard, to, hard to find the value of. So let me give you an example. Let's say that this function, let's use our imagination and pretend that this function is the square root of x. And you want to find, you want to find out what is the, the uh, square root of 9.5. So what is the value of the function when x is 9.5? Well, that's, that's a pretty difficult question to ask if we're not allowed to use a, cal a calculator. So what we can do is, you know, let's not call this c anymore. Let's call this 9. And then if we stay really close to 9, or, or hence, you know, 9.5, if, if we only move over by 0.5, then we should get a pretty good approximation using the tangent line. And so now we have f of 9, that's easy to find, f prime of 9, that's easy to find, and then 9.5 minus 9, that's just 0.5, right? This is the change in x, how much does x change? So let me even write that, this, this could be written as the change in x. So we only changed by a little bit, by 0.5, which means our approximation is going to be pretty good. So let's go through this and actually, and actually solve this problem here. So we'll actually do a linear approximation. So this is f of 9.5. And, you know, use your imagination. This is not, this doesn't really look that much like the graph of the square root function. Maybe that's a little bit better there. But, okay, so what are we going to do? Well, we're, we're trying to find the height of the tangent line at 9.5 because that's going to be our approximation. So we're going to say the height of the tangent line is just equal to f of 9 9 was the value we chose because 9 was an easy value to choose. And because 9 is pretty close to 9.5, so our change in x is small. So f of 9 plus f prime of 9 times by the change in x, which is just 0.5, right? We only move over by 0.5, or in other words, 1 half. So times by 1 half. And now all we have to do is, is figure out uh, what these values are. So let's take the derivative of the square root. So if f of x is equal to x to the one half, the square root of x, same thing, then f prime of x, the derivative is just a power rule. We bring down the one half times by x to the negative one half, which simplifies to one 
over 2 times the square root of x. So hopefully derivatives have been, become quite comfortable for you. Okay, so this is easy now. y is equal to f of 9, well that's just the square root of 9, which is 3, plus 1 over 2 times the square root of 9, so what's 2 times, uh, which is 3, so 2 times 3, so let's just write this as 1 over 6, times by 1 half. So this simplifies to 3 plus 1 twelfth. And let's see if we can figure out what that is. So 1 divided by 12 is 0 0.083 repeating. So this is equal to 0 0.083 repeating. Okay, and what is the actual value of the square root of 9? So how good was our approximation? So, oh, sorry, square root of 9.5. Square root of 9.5 is 3.0822. So, the actual value was, oh, sorry, this is, this is 3.0833. And then the actual value up here was closer to, or, or was actually 3.082. And then it was 2 and so on and so on. So we're off by about 0 0.001. That's not too bad. That's the, our, our approximation in this case was pretty decent. We're only off by 0 0.001. So this is how linear approximations work and, and, and why they might be useful. And they're not too hard. So all you got to do is think about the point slope form of a line and then you just all you're doing is you're using the tangent line at a really convenient place so that was the key to this whole problem okay I didn't emphasize this enough is that the key to this problem was we were looking for 9.5 but 9.5 was too difficult so we wanted to move over by a very small amount to a convenient location so we can move over by 0.5 a, a, a relatively small amount and get to 9 which was a, a convenient location for us if we had something like the square root of 12, well, that's going to be harder. We have to move over 4 to get to the square root of 16. That's too much. Or we have to go back down to 9, so we have to move over 3 to get to 9, which is probably too much of a change for this tangent line to be, you know, a decent approximation. So, you know, part of using uh, linear approximations is, is that you have to be able to actually uh, find a good value to use or a convenient value. Anyways, I hope that last part didn't confuse you. If it did, just ignore it. And, and this is Linear Approximation. See you in the next video.